May the 4th be with you. Hello, Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, in case you didn't know, it's May the 4th, at least when I'm making this video. By the time you see it, probably not. But this is officially Star Wars Day, May the 4th. <laughs> Thought we'd celebrate a little bit. I've got, I think, a treat for you with a watercolor painting of Luke in his X-Wing. I had a blast painting it, and I hope you enjoy it. And I'm going to share a little bit of Star Wars trivia with you while we paint. Well, like, this is your favorite time of the year, right? So how are you going to celebrate? You're going to force levitate to your nap spot. Okay, well, it's a plan. <laughs> anyway, let's do a Star Wars painting. Maybe you'll have as much fun watching as I had painting it. All right, so as we start this, I'm going to do a study, just sort of a digital pencil study. I'm working in my iPad Pro in the program Procreate, and that's uh, the Apple Pencil in my hand. So just to get those kind of technical details out of the way, some of you will, who are familiar with Procreate will probably ask what, what brush that is. It's the 6B Pencil. So I decided to do a study on this one just because it's a pretty involved uh, painting and I do want to use some loose techniques uh, some very splashy kind of loose background techniques with combined with tight areas and those aspects of a painting sometimes can be very experimental and go awry so I want to be able to think through this plus I'm also working out the lightness a bit and so it helps to do a study I don't always do a study um, but I thought it would be helpful. And also because on my iPad, I can transfer this using the Etcher Mirror. Uh, I could also do it on, on paper. So if you're not into digital, that's fine. Don't worry about it. You can do it on paper and you can use transfer paper or whatever type of transfer method you like to use. But with uh, digital, I can use the Etcher Mirror. I could transfer this as many times as I wanted in different sizes. So yeah, just working my way through the details. Um, now, this is gonna be rough, very rough, uh, mostly a value study, so that's why it's uh, monochromatic. Usually, I'm very, very happy that I did them. They always improve, or usually improve, the final when I do a study. So also in this video, I wanted to do some trivia, just for fun, share some little trivia bits that we found out about Star Wars. I'll share a personal one right off the bat. My wife and I were dating when we saw the first Star Wars. It was in 1977. It was in the end of the summer. It was so popular it had been running all summer. I had already seen it with some friends of mine at school and I wanted uh, my wife-to-be to see it. So summer of 1977, right at the end of the summer, we saw the actual first release of Star Wars. And in those days, with the standards of movie production and effects and all, it was amazing. So yeah, fun times. So I'm finishing up the details on this study. And as I said, always a big, big help. Even the background, um, I used some bold, uh, sort of charcoal-like strokes just to kind of indicate where I might do loose wash. I'm using a combination of a pencil brush and an eraser. And in Procreate, you can actually choose the eraser to match your pencil. Now, I've had people ask me uh, if I would do Procreate tutorials. I probably will not ever do that. I'm a watercolor channel, but also because there are so many really good ones on YouTube. So I'm using the new Hanamula watercolor collection paper and I'm, this is the first time I'm using the hot press. I just wanted to say that was fantastic paper. So here I'm just using the etcher mirror and I'm just transferring the study down onto my watercolor paper. The great thing about the mirror is you can do it any size and of course you can do it over and over. There's my tracing or my transfer. Just going to clean it up a little bit and uh, I'm going to start out by doing some toning with the Albert Durer watercolor pencil. And this is just as I apply washes so the main, most important details don't get lost. You'll also see me doing this later. You'll also see me doing this later with a standard colored pencil, a black one. 
just to uh, recapture some of the lines. And also, it's going to have a bit of a mixed media look to it. Okay, time for another Star Wars trivia. Hats off to my wife. She went and looked all these up, and these some of these are great. So Robert England, uh, if you're familiar with the Freddy Krueger movies, he was the, the chief star, was considered, actually, to play the role of Han Solo in Star Wars. And he told his then-close friend, who was sleeping on his couch, Mark Hamill, of all people, go audition for the role of Luke Skywalker. Well, the rest is history. All right, I'm wetting the background where I'm going to start some of these loose background washes. Um, when you get really loose areas in a painting like this, sometimes it's anybody's bet as to how it's going to turn out. And one of the reasons I did the study in Procreate. So if this didn't work, I could do it all over again. Now you can do that, as I said before, on paper too. You don't need a digital tablet and Procreate. So I'm working on what is going to be the shadow side of his face and helmet. And of course the background is very, very dark. But I know there's a lot of orange in his jumpsuit, so I thought it was best kind of offset with cooler purples. Now here, this is what I was talking about, so kind of recapturing some of those lines. This is a uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos, standard color pencil, and I just want to make sure I don't lose those lines, but I also want them to show. So uh, I'm happy with this being sort of a mixed media. It's mostly going to be watercolor, but uh, you'll see a little bit of Posca pen and gel pen at the end. And I would guess this is probably the only mixed media that I'm going to use is that black colored pencil. Here we're going to get into parts of the jumpsuit. And I like to get the loose parts out of the way or at least get an established look for them. And they really, really are easy to overdo. This is a Da Vinci Casaneo quill. And I'll have all of the supplies as usual down below in the description. So here's another Star Wars trivia. Now that doesn't apply to this film that this shot is from, but it's great. Michael Jackson, believe it or not, attempted to persuade George Lucas to give him a part uh, in the first uh, episode one, the prequel, The Phantom Menace, as Jar Jar Binks. How fitting is that? <laughs> Offering to play the role in full prosthetics. Michael Jackson as Jar Jar Binks. You draw your own conclusions on that one. All right, so we're adding the flesh tone, the beginning flesh tone base colors to the face, of course. Really couldn't see any hair. It was all obscured by shadow. But as I always preach in all of my videos, uh, and it was no different here, values are key. They're more important than the details. And on the face, I didn't mention it, but that was a Lebenson brush. That was a small goat and synthetic blend. And again, I'll list these all. There it is again. It's a good detail brush. All right, so here's another uh, Star Wars trivia for you. And this is apparently a classic. Um, this was, I guess, talked about early on and, and then afterwards. But George Lucas really wanted to make a Flash Gordon movie. That was something big from his childhood. In fact, uh, some of the campiness of the Star Wars movies was something he actually wanted to bring out, you know, so it wasn't completely serious. It was very kind of cheesy in places. And, you know, from the era that George Lucas came from, Flash Gordon would have been a big, a big thing, but uh, he couldn't get the rights to make that movie. So what did he do? Created his own, and that's Star Wars. <laughs> All right, we're getting near the end now, and you're seeing some of the mixed media. I used a, a Jelly Roll gel pen for a lot of those white highlights, but I wanted some bolder and thicker, and that's where this Posca pen, paint pen, comes in. I could have done that with gouache just as easily, So, uh, but I like the gel pen and the Posca pen because they are acrylic, and they will not loosen up, in case I wanted to go back over any of this with a wash. So at this point, we're just tweaking details. And I think we're going to call that one done. Here's actually the final. And this was like uh, 10, 12 hours later. 
and I added a few more drips and a few more splashes, but not much changed after that. Thanks everyone. Appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you patrons for your support. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.